we have with us Shahela Rashid, an icon, a celebrity. She's got the map of Begu Sarai behind her. And she's here specifically for the campaign for Comrade Kanaya Kumar, uh, who himself has become a national and international icon of the youth, fighting the parliamentary constituency of Begu Sarai. By the way, also known as the Leningrad of Bihar. So it's not just Kanaya, it's the revival of a left tradition, a very strong left base. The Communist Party of India has had a strong base here, has sent members to parliament in 66, 67, has had MLAs from this constituency. And today, several decades after which communism has not really borne fruit on this soil, we have Kanaya Kumar offering hope across party lines. Hmm. Shailaji, uh, you are here and uh, you are here in your support, you will come back again. Uh, how do you see this happening? Uh, see, we've gone to the villages, we've gone to the interiors and what is uh, fantastic about this campaign is that even the little kids, the very small ones, you ask them, do you know Kanhiya Kumar? They know Kanhiya Kumar. They may not realize the full importance of everything that's happening, but they know Kanhiya Kumar. So I think that's really important to have a mass leader, an organic leader who is risen from like literally from rags uh, and uh, is now going to the biggest uh, house of democracy in this country. Uh, one, I mean, I, we wish we could tell people like who, who he is, uh, how people all over the world, they write books about him, they are doing research on him, they are making films on him. Um, in some areas where there is not much awareness, where people don't use much social media, uh, I mean, people don't even have electricity most of the time, right? So how do you expect them to see TV and social mm -hmm. media? Uh, so they, they know who he is, they, they know that he is famous, uh, but we have to tell them why he is famous what he did, uh, you know, how, how important a figure he is and what we've been trying to tell them is that, you know, if he raises your issue, the world will listen. That's the main thing uh, which is our, you know, campaign plan. Has the Kanaya of 2016 mm -hmm. or 2015-2016 and the Kanaya of now yes. changed? Um, is he less accessible? Uh, I mean, see, yes and no. I mean, when he has to uh, cater to like lacks of people then you can't expect him to be you know on the phone all the time etc uh, but uh, I don't think that he's changed I think that he's very solidly stuck to his politics and that's something that's very inspiring and appreciable about him uh, and he's still even today he's talking about equality he's standing for the same values uh, and while being you know while being uh, uh, while being emotional while being funny He's also tackling important issues like in his speech, he even talked about Article 370 and he was like, Article 370 is not the issue, the issue is whether we should have a university in Begustarai. So I think that's really important, like bringing back the focus to the basics of the people, or the very basic needs, I think that's what we need in this country to do. You know, you, you mentioned something very important because uh, uh, he mentioned this thing about 370 and you, um, I've been here a few days longer than you and uh, I heard him talk in one of the uh, local areas mm -hmm. uh, and explain Article 370 in a way that very few uh, political leaders, mm -hmm. even from the mainstream opposition, have the guts to do. Mm -hmm. And he was telling people, the art of course what you said, is Article 370 relevant to us or is it jobs? But he also said that, by the way, do you know that there are 10 states in the country where you can't buy land? Mm -hmm. You can't buy land in Himachal, you can't buy land in neighboring Jharkhand yeah. for a variety of reasons. So this 370 ka jo bhut is only to be able to create a hatred for Kashmiris yeah. and by de facto by of Muslims, you know, yeah. So he has that courage, he yeah. has the courage of conviction. And and that leads to my next question because for many of us, and you of course are, uh, for me it's like it's like a thrice reaffirmed because you are uh, Kashmiri, you're Muslim and you're a woman. Yeah. So I mean it's an amazing combination. And I have a particular relationship with Kashmir because mm -hmm. of my family, because Sheikh Abdullah and my grandfather were very, very close. Right. So for me, this movement uh, of all of yours, I would say all of your movement in JNU, it's not just Kanaya, to see the slogan Azadi mm -hmm. reclaimed like this and to have t-shirts uh, printed mm -hmm. in Begu Sarai, mm -hmm. you know, using a term which was so badly slandered, yes. is almost a kind of recapturing of the narrative. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what, what you realize when you travel across the length and breadth of this country is that uh, the present government, the Modi government especially, uh, has turned all of India into a conflict zone. Uh, these things, you know, like uh, what you would hear in Kashmir, say disappearances. Now you hear about it in JNU, very much in our backyard, you know, uh, when the jeep went missing. What you used to hear uh, in Kashmir, say, about stone painting, etc. Now you have it happening everywhere. You have BJP RSS people going chasing 
people of Kashmir out, pelting stones at them. Um, so the things that we used to hear, uh, say for example, protesters uh, when they are fired at. So this, this would happen only in Kashmir. Now it's happening even in Mansour. It has happened on Palmer Rally so many times in Tutikor. So uh, I would say that the present dispensation has created so much tension without solving any of people's problems. You know, if the tensions had been created while solving people's problems, then it would have even made sense. But it's like we, people, people's problems are also not being solved, and at the same time, only tensions are being created. Mm -hmm. So that has turned all of India into a conflict zone. This mob lynching phenomenon that we see today. Uh, this, I think, people need to realize that you know, by making Kashmir the central point, an ego point, you know, like making it a point of ego. Uh, you know, we, we are doing a lot of harm to the rest of India actually and I think that people need to be a bit relaxed about uh, Kashmir and I think, I hope that a leader like Pandeya can actually help resolve these tensions rather than, you know, uh, create more tensions.